go. Help me. Can you hear me? Uh, hard act to follow. So um, my name is Peter Cosgrove. In the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to hopefully tell you why CEOs and people on the board are really struggling with technology right now, which might sound like a bit, a bit of a strange thing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you three, uh, three problems and hopefully three solutions. So the first one, the relationship between the CTO and the CEO. Currently, or back in 2009, 30% of CTOs reported into the CEO. Seems quite low. Today, 2012, it's down to 23%. Now compare that with the CFO, where practically every CFO reports into the CEO. Now, we know technology is everywhere now, and it's absolutely central to the business, hence why we've conferenced like this. So why is the number so low? Well, the CEO, people on the board, they're confused. This is how it used to be. We had a CFO, then we had a COO, then we started having a chief marketing officer. Then we got our CTO, it was all still okay. But then we had a CIO, then we had a chief mobile officer, then we had a chief sec security information officer. So the CEO is confused because it wants one point of contact, or more importantly, whether you like it or not, it wants one throat to choke. And this doesn't give it to them. So they're a challenge. On top of this, when we interviewed CEOs, and we asked them what they were talking about in the boardroom around IT, they said, well, to be honest, most of our time, we spend talking about project plans and reducing IT costs. But what we want to speak about is future technology trends and how it can change our business. But they don't feel they're getting that. On top of that, when we did a survey of tech professionals, we asked them, what's the most important skill for your head of technology for your CTO? And it was resoundingly, it's got to be the people skills. They've got to be influencers. And here's the challenge, because CEOs see their CTO with deep tech knowledge, they're a great get it done operational manager, but these days, what they want is somebody with a strong opinion, somebody who's commercial, and yes, somebody who's a revenue generator, because they see technology is changing. But here's the first challenge. The relationship isn't there yet because they don't feel they're getting these opinionated, commercial, revenue-generating CTOs. Number two, the business keeps asking technology and technologists, why can't I just do this? And it's a challenge. We know technology is everywhere. We've got one-year-olds accessing iPads in my school. We've got IT policies for six- and seven-year-olds. But it's a bit of a problem for technology because technology is in our home, it's in our kitchen, it's now in our pocket. And this should be an advantage, but it's actually becoming a real challenge because a quote I heard recently from someone in business is, why can I be a master of the universe Saturday and Sunday and feel like such a dweeb Monday to Friday? How is it possible that I can find who sat behind me in second grade in high school, but I don't know who my best customer is? So what's going on here? So they're really frustrated. They're finding they can do really simple, clever things on their mobile devices at home, and then when they get into the enterprise, the business linking with technology just is not working the same way. So it's frustrating. Yes, I understand there's things like compliance, IT security, encryption, and all these things need to be factored into it, but the business don't care, and they're getting frustrated. So on top of that, the CEO has this feeling that technology is going to be the game changer. There is some great idea out there for their business which will make them go from being quite good to dominating. So we need to ensure that technology and the proliferation isn't a challenge to business, but it actually helps become a game changer and stop the business saying, why can't I? The third challenge, and a couple of people talked about this earlier, talent. And it's not about the best talent, it's about the right talent within your organization. People say they measure their talents and they say it's our most important resource. The number one thing we focus on are people. I can guarantee nearly, well, nearly none of you measure your talent effectively. It's not done very well in organizations and if your CEO isn't doing it, it all comes down to you. So you better be measuring the people you bring into the business. But the challenge we have is technologists don't like hiring, they don't like interviewing, they hate the CV process, they find it irrational because people are irrational, they find it slow, they find it boring. So they don't prioritize it. So what happens? Well, Bill Gates was... Let's flick back to the Bill Gates slide. Bill Gates was once quoted as saying, others may have better technology than us from time to time, but we, what we can be very good at is actually taking their technology and making it better. And he quoted the, 
spreadsheet, the database, the internet browser. Now, you may disagree that he made it better. You might say he made it more confusing. But the fact is, you can't argue with the share price. But his interesting point is, yes, we have innovators in our organization. But guess what? Sometimes it's not innovators you need. You need to neutralize the competition and understand that there's times when actually looking at the competition and having the skill sets in mind for that are much better than just innovating. So the challenge is, companies often don't know the talent they want in their own organization. And guess what? If you don't know the right talent in your organization, and if you don't know what the priorities are for the business in 2012, how can you hire the right talent? So there are the three challenges. Let's talk about a solution. The first one, the relationship with the CEO. We've talked about the CEO. They want you to be opinion, opinionated, a revenue generator. They want you to sell, sell technology. So here's an idea. You may have heard the story about the, fifth, the father who goes into Target in America, really annoyed that his daughter, who's 15, has just been sent a mail drop about pregnancy products. He unfortunately finds out the next day that she actually is pregnant. But Target looked into this, and they realized she'd moved from a scented shampoo to an unscented shampoo, and she started buying certain vitamins and pills that pretty much only pregnant people bought. So they'd given their algorithm an 89% chance that she was pregnant. So basically, the store worked out she was pregnant before the father or mother knew. And that's how data analytics work. And why is that important? Because facts tell, stories sell. Right now, what the business want is a quick, pithy answer. And then they'll get into the detail, the 300 gig implementation spreadsheet. But you've got to give them something to capture their imagination first. And that's not enough. Business now want technology that does it for you. They don't want to even have to think about it. So we've heard all the time that, well, the technology was great, but you know what? The business people, they just didn't use it properly. That's why it failed. Can we get technology where the business doesn't even have to be involved? Let me give an example. We've just worked, we're just working with DataHug, who'd be well known to the Web Summit. And they have this terrific product where any CRM software you've had in the past always relies on the salesperson coming back to the office, typing in information on all the uh, visits they've gone to and all the data. And guess what? They don't do it. DataHug have the idea that they track inbound and outbound email because it's still the number one communication mechanism, and that's how they target almost a hug factor with your clients. So the business don't have to do anything, and it still works. That's perfect. That's what we want. So to build that relationship with the CEO, the CTO is going to have to be able to sell solutions internally and externally, as well as understanding the business. So how do we use the fact that technology is everywhere to our advantage and improve the brand of IT and not have the business going, why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to start talking to the business about the business. The business feel they're talking technology and they feel they're ensconced in technology. Let's look at it as an advantage. They don't care about software as a service, platform as a service. They don't actually care about the infrastructure at all. They just want it to work. For them, information is Google, messaging is Facebook and SMS, video is YouTube, Skype. So you need to start talking their language. And here's an example, Yammer and Chatter, two communication tools, two social communication tools that are really working for business. Because they're business tools used by the business for the business. And not only are they now being used for communication, they're also being used, Dell's using it really well for things like crowdsourcing. So we need to look at tools like this and go, why are these tools so successful in the business? And replicate those or improve on them. The other thing technologists need to do is be more visible. Let's look on the fact that technology is everywhere. Everybody's got a smartphone in their pocket. Our CEO wants to talk technology. Let's look at that as a huge positive. Okay? Let's go out and talk to the business. The more you talk to the business, the more you'll understand about it, the more you'll improve the brand of IT, the more you'll improve the influence of IT. But that's not enough. I've talked about technologists having to sell. Technology is getting more and more complicated. It's not good enough to have the salesperson going out to meetings and talking technology. You need the technologist. You need that genius out there who can talk about the product. Now, let's be clear. You need the right genius to get the wrong person out there. That won't help. But if you do get the right person out there to the meeting, you can help improve revenue generation. You improve generating revenue. You see that technology is absolutely central to the business. You're going to improve the IT influence. And that, again, will stop the business saying, why can't I? But it all comes down to the third piece, which, again, we've heard earlier today, which is talent. It is the differentiator now. It used to be money. It used to be our technology. It was land. Now it's about the people, the innovation, the creativity within the room. And the DNA you bring into the organization is going to make the huge difference. And it's not, again, about the best talent. It's about the right talent. Steve Elop, 2011, CEO of Nokia, quote, how is it possible 
sorry, how is it possible that in 2007, Apple created the iPhone, and in 2011, Nokia have nothing remotely similar? It was a damning statement. And he was honest about it. He said, we felt we had to out-innovate. We couldn't copy, whereas Google had Android out within the year. Why is that important? There are times you need innovation, clearly. But this was a time where somebody needed to be a business-savvy technologist and go, we need to keep up. We can't fall behind. Let's swallow our pride slightly and not try and out-innovate. Let's just try and keep up and see what we're going to do next. So when you then understand what the right talent is, you just need to go out and find it. And you've got conferences like this today where you've got thousands of technologists out there. You've also got online communities. But the point is, very simply, if you know what you want, you're going to find it a lot easier to find it. And that's one of the biggest problems with hiring the best talent or the right talent. People don't really know what they're looking for in the, in the first place. Last point around this, um, I talked about data earlier. You'll see in football that people are measuring performance with things like Prozone. There was a great book, Moneyball, that came into a movie about the Oakland A's and how they use data to improve performance. But what about human capital data? Recruiting and interviewing is one of the worst ways of hiring, but it's how we do it. It's people are irrational. They often say, the time you interview someone, that's the best they're ever going to be. They only go down from there. So when you look at all the human capital data out there, CV databases, LinkedIn.com, our bios, Twitter, is it possible that we can start building that data to actually put a scoring system together of what great talent is? And that could be the differentiator. Well, guess what? The recruitment industry globally is worth about 50 billion. And nobody's got this right yet. People are trying, but it could be a huge opportunity. So to conclude, I'm a businessman, and I know that my attention span is getting less and less, and I feel I want the wow effect very quickly. This guy who wrote this book, The Shallows, highlights that all of our attention spans are getting shorter for one reason, the amount of tech stimuli that's hitting us every day. So with that in mind, um, here's a picture of the Crystal Space Station. Some of you may have seen this before. It's from the game Entropia. Um, it's entirely virtual, but it's sold at auction for 330,000 real dollars. So next time you want to talk to your CFO or COO about gaming stats and the statistics about the boom, start with the wow effect. Start with a story like this. You'll capture the attention, and then you can sell and talk about the rest. So to conclude, we see that the CEO is looking for a new CTO, somebody who is an influencer, a persuader, a revenue generator. And it's going to be a challenge. For a technology to do this, they may need to change how they think, how they act, and they might even have to start selling. Thank you very much.